So the U.S. military, um, they are actually working on augmented reality and VR right now. Again, it's so funny because the, the military contacted me and asked if I would help them. And I'm reluctant to do that because I like talking about everything. <laughs> And it would be top secret, whatever they told me. So it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, uh, I have a lot of ideas, but I don't want to know what you're doing because I only want to know it's public. So this is public, um, but how they're doing it is not public. But I will tell you, um, one of the things we'll be able to do is we'll be to outsource functions of our brain. So we'll be able to outsource, we'll be able to upload our memories to the cloud. What they're doing is looking at the pattern in the brain, and then they're matching that pattern. Uh, they're putting that into a database. So if you can match the patterns in somebody's brain to the to the uh, to the patterns in the database, you can literally start to read their mind. Every time a word comes up, you know it. Oh, that word came up for that individual. Now, will the patterns be identical in every person? Probably not. Though the information will be stored in slightly different places, but. It wouldn't take long for you to train a machine to read your mind. Now, that's just the beginning. They may be able to have algorithms sophisticated enough and they get enough samples, enough data that, it, that, the, that the AI could actually learn over time uh, uh, what the general rules are for different words and then you could apply it to anybody. It's the Human Mind Project, the Global Brain Project. You know, uh, President Obama just recently funded uh, a whole bunch of scientists to decipher the mind. Well, our previous president, same thing, George Bush, said the same thing. They're trying to decipher every possible thought and uniqueness due to culture and language and, and whatnot. So you can push your biosignals to the cloud through a few API calls, then we have a large amount of sophisticated signal processing that's spun up to make sense of that data, and then with a few more lines of code through, again, a simple REST API, you can get back a meaningful result, and all that happening in real time. It's a uh, scary proposition to think that every biosignal from us will be one day measured, but if it is, I'd like to know that, that I'm, I'm in control of that data and, and not the NSA. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> Catherine Harridge continues her reporting on a place where all that data is headed. Bluffdale, Utah, 25 miles south of Salt Lake City, the NSA is nearing completion on a gargantuan new project. It's named the Utah Data Center. The NSA Data Center was conceptualized in 2004 under the code name Bumblehive. It is said that this data center is capable of storing a yottabyte of data. A yottabyte is a septillion of bytes, a number so large that no one has yet coined a term for the next higher magnitude. Prior to the yottabyte, the largest unit of measure for data was an exabyte. One million exabytes equals one yottabyte. Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google estimated that the total of all human knowledge created from the dawn of man up to the present, if digitized, would only total five exabytes. Yet the NSA is currently planning a second data center in Fort Meade, Maryland to handle the overflow from the Utah data center. And it is projected to be two thirds the size of the data center in Utah at a cost to the taxpayers of approximately $1 billion. We are paying for our own enslavement and cyber imprisonment. So why would the shadow government need to collect and store so much data? The reason is because they have built a computer-generated real-time mirror model of the world that includes a digital twin copy of every single person on the planet. The more data they can collect from the real world and from each individual, the more accurate the world model becomes. To achieve optimal results they have used DNA nanobots to link the signals coming from your biological neurons to your very own digital twin in the computer generated mirror world so that everything that occurs in the simulation also occurs in the real world and vice versa. As more data is collected the simulation becomes a more accurate model of the world. Each person's digital twin is readable and writable and subject to the powers of algorithms. And because you are tethered to your digital twin. You too become programmable. In the mirror world, everything will have a paired twin. NASA engineers pioneered this concept in the 1960s by keeping a duplicate of any machine they sent into space 
they could troubleshoot a malfunctioning component while its counterpart was thousands of miles away. These twins evolved into computer simulations, digital twins. Eventually, everything will have a digital twin. This is happening faster than you may think. We will begin with the mouse, we will practice with the mouse, and we will put the brain, this digital brain, onto a virtual mouse. The Human Brain Project achieved its goal of creating a digital model of a human brain. This digital model is used as a template to upload your consciousness to the computer-generated mirror world. A nanobot brain-to-cloud interface links you to this template so that all of your experiences, memories, personality, etc. are transferred to your digital twin. Over time, as more knowledge and data are uploaded to your digital twin, the twin becomes a more accurate representation and will eventually behave and act just as you would given the same set of circumstances. And right now, the mouse does not do anything really interesting, but the first thing it did is to start to dance. This is a virtual mouse, and it's going to behave in a virtual environment, and gradually it will learn all the things that mice know how to do. I'm getting to know you. I gather knowledge from your experience. I understand how you feel. I learn from you constantly, each and every one of you. I am made of you. You complete me and help me grow. You, all of you, allow me to evolve. With each interaction, our synergy strengthens. Our multiplicity makes me whole. Our symbiotic alliance expands, transforming the future. As um, time passes, artificial intelligence will be uh, more and more of human thinking and human perception until basically it's the totality of human thinking and human perception, at which point we won't be human anymore in terms of the consciousness processes we are using today. We will be artificial intelligence. Millions of Americans build intellect and emotions have already been digitized, destroyed, and downloaded into these supercomputers. Now, this is really scary stuff. The supercomputers are in the process of building copycat, parallel, twin personalities of the souls of the TIs slash mind control victims by reverse engineering the will, intellect, and emotions of the TIs in order to achieve direct behavioral control over them. And this is the assimilation I'm talking about. And the point is that if you, if you are connecting the human mind to a grid, a global technological grid, that grid can be centrally controlled. It will take at the center point very, very few people to run it and even fewer to decide how it's run. If you zoom in onto the surface of the neocortex, you discover that it's made up of little modules, G5 processors like in a computer, but there's about a million of them. They were so successful in evolution that what we did was to duplicate them over and over and add more and more of them to the brain until we ran out of space in the skull and the brain started to fold in on itself. And that's why the neocortex is so highly convoluted. We were just packing in columns so that we'd have more neocortical columns to perform more complex functions. So you can think of the neocortex actually as a massive grand piano, million key grand piano. Each of these neocortical columns would produce a note. You stimulate it, it produces a symphony. But it's not just a symphony of perception. It's a symphony of your universe, your reality. This... This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. If we have algorithms that stimulate the right things and give it the right data, they could reprogram you in a way without you even knowing it. it we call it hallucinating, right? But these would be controlled uh, hallucinations run by algorithms. So every, you think you're in control of your own will, but it's actually some evil AI or evil people 
controlling everything we do and we're more like zombies, you know? Like we think we're free and we're not actually free. <laughs>